Wow, welcome back. It's been a while since I made a fishing video. I think uh, mid-September was the last one. But we are out on a lake in Manitowoc County. Got Landon with me today. And Landon already caught one fish. We got fully set up. And just as we were setting the last tip up in, Landon pulled about a 24 inch northern through the hole. Uh, got the release on video, got a nice picture of it. But uh, we are just gonna settle down and wait. We are just tip up fishing, strictly tip up fishing today. So um, the main goal is we wanna get a nice big largemouth bass, maybe 14, 15 inches or something, just barely that it's legal. Uh, we wanna do a catch and cook, catch clean cook with some largemouth bass. We've been catching a, you know, a couple largemouth bass every time we've come out to this spot. That's why I wanna do a catch clean cook here. It's 42 degrees. It is a Sunday, it's February 2nd, 2020. Super Bowl Sunday actually. And uh, it's windy, it's pretty windy. So hopefully the flags are popping. Stick around, you'll be hooked. All the time, I am, you gotta keep going. But that's the oh, reason. Flag. Flag. Go, run, run, flag. run. Let's get started. Here, let me grab that. Shot started, guys. Oh, I got a gas back on. Yeah. Grab it. Grab the line. Pull, 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 buddy. Ooh, look at that one. He is little. You want to hold him? No. <laughs> All right. You want to put him back? Here, put him back, buddy. back nicely. Shot started, guys. That is a little one, huh? Nice job, nice buddy. Job. Get it, Landon. He's on there. What did you get? Is it a pike or a bass? It's a bass. All right, good job, buddy. Good job. Look at that, Landon. Yeah, we can keep that one. That one's legal. We're going to eat it, Landon. Oh, my God. All right. What do you think, Landon? What kind of That's fish? That's a legendary fish. <laughs> it's legendary? What kind of fish is it? It's carp. It's a? It's a, it's a bass. 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 Bass fish. What are we going to do with them? Keep them. And we're going to keep them and? <laughs> We're going to eat them. No. Yep. <laughs> can't eat them. I'm going to explain my tip-up game for everybody that uh, maybe doesn't tip-up fish much. I almost exclusively tip-up fish, and I'd say that's kind of my, you know, my forte. I fish for northern pike and bass through the ice almost exclusively during the ice season. Um, I start out, this is a number four size hook, only because I think there's a pretty good chance we're going to catch some largemouth bass today. Normally if I'm fishing for pike, I go a little bit smaller. Here in Wisconsin, our, our lakes are filled with small northern pike and kind of that size largemouth bass. Um, so I like to keep my hooks small. And then I have 20 pound fluorocarbon. That's a little bit bigger maybe than what is even needed for these uh, size fish. But we have Landon out here pulling tip-ups and I do have a little uh, split shot. The reason I go a little bit bigger with my fluorocarbon when Landon is out fishing with us is because he really doesn't play the fish. He just pulls the tip up up and he starts pulling. So that extra strength of that line, um, you know, has a little bit more uh, forgiveness to it. Like when I'm pulling in a fish, I'll try to keep the line a little bit lighter and then when the fish runs, I'll let it actually go. But he doesn't have that sense to do that. So um, I always just kind of upgrade my line a little bit more than what I need when he's pulling tip ups. And then we're sitting in about 15 feet of water, which is about as deep as I ever fish for, for these uh, largemouth bass or northern pike. Um, so usually I'll kind of fish anywhere from four to maybe 15 feet max and I don't set anything close to the bottom. I'll set it out maybe 15 feet and the way that I do that is I just keep it really simple. I don't even measure anything. Um, I'll just take my minnow and 
go. That's about six feet because my arm span is about six feet. And then I'll go one more. That's about 12 feet. So that bait fish, that golden shiner is sitting just up off the weeds. A real easy target for a largemouth or a northern pike to kind of just come over and chomp on. Get it, get it, get it. He's on there. Landon, just gentle, gentle, buddy. Nice, nice. Be nice. He's on there. Wow, that one took out a lot of line. You can tell he's on there too. Get closer to the hole, buddy. Get closer to the hole. There you go. Closer to the hole. Ooh, it's a northern. He's running. That's why we have that heavier fluorocarbon on there. Wow. Wow. That one might be legal. It's, it's very big, Landon. For here, it's very big. What do you think about that one, Landon? Good. Yeah? That's a, what kind of fish is that one? It's a large big. No, it's a northern pike. Northern pike. Do you want to let him go? No. All right, here we go. Let's put him back. That's a really nice size one for this area. He's gone, he's gone, stop, stop, wait, stop. Wait, wait, wait. He's gone. Aww. That's okay, bud. Hey, that's look, that happens sometimes. Sometimes fishes get away. How do you feel right now? Sad. That's okay. <laughs> do you want to teach her the camera? Doesn't look like he's there, Landon. Maybe. Oh, he is there, he's there. Grab it. Good job. Ooh. I think that helps to have the gloves off. Good thing it's a nice day. Northern. We are on a 547. Ooh. Big. Is he on there? Get closer to the hole. Oh yeah. What is it? It's a big fish. I think it's a northern. northern. I saw it. Yep. Oh, wow. <laughs> you gave him a ride. That's how many did you catch now? Five. Uh, five. Five northern pike and one bass. You want to put them back? No. No, no. You want to eat them? No, we can't. We can't. We can't eat them. We just can't say, eat them. Say, there he goes back. There he goes back. Okay, so we haven't got a tip up in a while, so what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna go around, we're gonna check all the tip ups, make sure that the minnows are still there, kicking lively, not that they're drowning in any weeds. If there are any weeds on them, we'll just pull them off, throw them off to the side. Naturally, you don't wanna put them back in the hole. Um, so, just, oh, well, stuck on something here. Yeah, they were stuck. This one, see, this one was stuck on a weed. So you see the top of this minnow. He's still kicking and lively, but you can tell he was in weeds. I had to pull kind of hard to get him out of here. Just want to pull all these off. Kind of throw him off to the side a little bit. Maybe we should lift him up a little bit so that he's not um, back right back in those weeds. So I'll put him down here. I'll roll in this a little bit. I pulled it up probably about a foot and we'll stick this one back down in there and there we go. Black. Set the hook, pull him, pull him, pull him. He's there. Get him, Landon, get him, get him, get him. 
Oh, what is it? Oh! oh wow! Baby. How are you feeling? Good! All right, well, that was pretty exciting. We were here about two hours and we kind of ran out of minnows. We were only gonna fish until we ran out of bait anyway. And I think we went uh, seven for 11 or something like that. It was really, really fun out here and we accomplished our goal of getting a big largemouth bass to be able to eat. It just was legal, 14 and a quarter inches. And uh, next time you'll see me, we'll be in my kitchen. We'll be filleting it up. So as you can see, here's the perfectly acceptable size largemouth bass laying on my cutting board. Just make that cut just past the fin. And it's basically just like filleting a walleye. You do want to kind of angle your knife uh, at, a, at an angle toward the fish's head just in order to get underneath the scales and then just like a walleye you cut right along the backbone just underneath the tip underneath the skin with the tip of the knife there you can bust through all the way and push that out through the back really run your knife along the backbone and then there's a little bone I call them pin bones it's kind of like a Y bone on a northern but you just have to break through there and then slide your knife the rest of the way down the ribs. Again, exactly like a walleye, these fish are put together very similarly. The one thing that you'll notice on bass uh, that you will not have on a walleye is that the gill plate actually comes back so far that you'll actually get quite a bit of meat above the gill plate. Um, so you have to make sure that you really get your knife above the gill plate a little bit closer to the head of the fish and you do the exact same thing on the second side of the fillet that you did on the first side again just running the tip of your knife right down the backbone push it through and out toward the tail same thing on this side only I have a little bit of difficulty uh, getting that knife up and over the top of the rib so I kind of have to use my thumb to pull a little bit more there but that's really not a big deal again you get through that Y bone there slide your knife along the top of the ribs and cut the fillet off there one more cut I'm not using the sharpest knife here obviously as you can tell um, but it does work for bass and luckily to take the skin off of the fillet, it doesn't really take a sharp knife. You'll notice I'm using a fork to just kind of press that skin down to the board. And that makes it so that I am not just fighting the fillet, it's not slipping and sliding all over the board. Got one fillet off there and I'm setting to work on the second one. Same exact thing on this side. And uh, just separating that skin from the meat. Great fillets there, beautiful meat. And uh, you'll notice that I decided to try something on this bass I had never done before. I decided to take the cheeks out of this exactly like a walleye. And I was surprised that the cheeks aren't as thick. Um, you will get a little bit of meat off of them, but it's not a big like scallop sized piece that you'll get off of a walleye. Um, I've done this with northerns before. There's not a whole lot there. Um, there was definitely more meat on this bass than there was like on the cheeks of a northern so I thought it was definitely worth it. Two great looking fillets there and then the two cheeks above them there. So it's time for the cooking part of our catch clean cook. I've got my largemouth bass right here on my plate. I do have some fish fry, it's Zatarain's fish fry all ready to go in this bag and I patted dry my bass fillets. They're not like dry dry but uh, they're like moist at best. So they're going to go in my little shaky bag. I've also got my two little cheeks as well that are going to go into my little shaky bag and then that's why I like this method. You fill it up with air, you don't get any of the air out and you just shake them around in there till the fillets are really nicely coated. You can see there, there's a good, uh, you know, the breading is fully coated on the fillets of that fish. Hey, do you have any fries to go with that shake? 
And then I think this might be like a helpful trick. I'm not really sure, but I don't know where I learned this from or whatever, but to see if your oil is ready, you just kind of like get a little drops, get a few drops of water on your fingers, just kind of flick them at the pan. And if you hear that popping, that means it's ready to go. So I'll take my fillets, give them one last shake, lay them in there. Oh yeah, you want to hear it sizzle when they hit the pan. Gotta find the little cheeks in here. Alright, so these have been going about one minute. So I'm just gonna definitely flip the cheeks. I probably should have flipped those a little bit earlier. They're probably almost done already. Take the fillets. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice golden brown color. Ooh, I love, love that. Beautiful, look at that. Fantastic. I'm frying this in 100% peanut oil. I think uh, peanut oil can get like a little hotter without burning, so that's why I use that. I think it might be a little bit more expensive. While the rest of the fish is finishing up, I'll try one of the cheeks. That's fantastic. You wanna try one, Meg? Mm -hmm. It's a little. It's very good. Is it like walleye cheeks? I would imagine. Pretty much the same, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say it's the same. All right, and then I have paper towel just to kind of like get all the excess oil off the fish. That'll make them nice and crispy. I do like to hold and drain my fish as best I can over the pan first. And then I'll pop them on the, the paper towel there. Make sure to turn off my stove. And I don't like any sauces with my fish. I just like mine plain, but Megan really likes hers with tartar sauce and ketchup, so I got that out for her. Um, but I'm just gonna dig right in plain because I just, I think they're fantastic on their own. You can see that perfect white flesh, the perfect golden brown color of the fish coating there. That looks excellent. It's hot. That is so good. Gosh, that's good. Absolutely fantastic. Meg, you better try some of this. Ooh, that was a good crisp. Make sure to blow that off. That's hot as can be. Blow it. Very good. <laughs> would you eat it again? Yes, I would eat it again. It's very good. Well, that'll be it for us for our Catch Clean Cook. I'm glad you stuck around and watched for the whole thing. Uh, we're gonna get back to eating the bass because it is so darn tasty. Thanks for sticking around.